Yeah, hi folks, this is Martin from the photoacademy.eu and uh, this is part two of my workflow with Coral Aftershot Pro. And on the first part video we end up with this image here. And I told you something about my thoughts, what I will do with this image. And uh, this is the reason why it looks like it looks. It's because I'm thinking about printing it in black and white. And I will convert this image in an external editor. If you're not seen my other videos about external editing, please go back into the other videos about Aftershot Pro. There we have the videos about setting up the external editor. And for this image, I will go into an external editor called Snapseed. I right click on the image and here you can even use the shortcut. We go into Snapseed, it's from Nick Software. It's available on both Windows and Macintosh. It's a filter plugin, a little program with uh, some different filters. I can see here, I'm very sorry to your English speaking guys, I only have this program in German, but I can tell you all the functions and the sliders, what they are called in English. Here we have uh, the overall fine tuning, we can crop and we can push in details. And then we have some creative filters like I told you black and white, we have center focus, drama, frames, grunge, vintage and tilt shift as well. And I will work with these filters to end up with my black and white image. But I will start with this tune image set. Here I will set up a little bit more of a contrast. I will go into the ambient and you can see what's going on to the foreground and the background as well as the midground. You have different effects and I'm looking for a little bit more in this area here that we have a little bit more for the eye to look at. Raise the contrast just a tiny bit to start with. You can use control points as well to set mask points where the your settings will affect. You can mask up areas with these control points, U points from uh, Nick software. But I'm uh, not using them for this image. We are using the settings and after that I will go into the details. A little bit of sharpening, just a hair, but I will push the structure, the overall structure of the image. With this button over here on the left hand side you can go into the preview or with the shortcut as well. Take a look on the before and after. Um, yeah, I like this structure. We use that setting so that we can go back to some other filters. Right now uh, it's looking interesting to me. I'm very happy with this area here but I need a little bit more of a drama. Uh, you have some presets here, but I don't use them. I go right into some custom settings, maybe darken a little bit. Uh, don't need the saturation. And here I look for this 
circle area for the structure here so that the eyes can right go onto it using this settings. And everything I do with these small settings and all these filters, I will that the eye of the viewer pay attention to a special area. This is the, the main point I have in front of me. Um, I don't use frames and I don't use center focus, even if uh, it's uh, very good to use center focus for some black and white images, but not for this. Um, I'm thinking about going into grunge or vintage, one of this. I, I'm sure I will use vintage, but I will show you grunge as well. Um, here you have some presets. Um, Coleman is one that I like because of the color. You can change the style of the color here with this style slider. You can set up the structure that you are having here, especially on the gray areas. Some structures you can choose from the panel. Um, you can decrease or increase the style of the structure, the hardness of the structure and saturation of the overall toning. You have contrast slider and uh, this highlight slider here. But I don't like the blurriness here on the edges, even if you can change it by clicking on this point. You can throw this point around or you can change the size of it but I don't like the blurriness, so I don't use this grunge. Even, even though this is uh, very interesting to me, but I don't think I like this grunge effect, so I go into the vintage. It's uh, very similar to the grunge presets. You have some very interesting presets that I like very much is the Charlie and the Dexter. Then you have some more. Miles, it's a good contrast, but I think I like Charlie a little bit more so that I can go into a structure, something like this, and use this texture an overlay with opacity something like this use a little bit of a saturation a vignette and you can change the style but I like the original style of the preset so I leave it you have some different styles here as you can see it's like a gradient filter. Um, right now we're using style 5. This is okay to me. I like these tones that's going on, especially if we go back into the black and white you will see if the, in a few seconds. You can use this vintage or grunge filter on the end after you're using black and white, but right now I think it's better to use this effects before going into black and white because of the color filters you can use here. It's uh, very similar to the filters we had on my old film days in front of our lens. You have the red filter, the orange, the yellow and the green. And if I'm looking on the image changing between green and red I think I might use a red filter, increase the contrast, lower the highlight and a little bit more of a graininess. I like this 
grain because of the printing. Can go down with the contrast and lower the highlight slider. Something like this, I think. Go back into the neutral filter. No. Red, green. No, not green. Red is exactly what I want. And we use this settings. I'm very happy with this image. It looks interesting to me. I will print it and maybe I go back into the Snapseed and change some settings and print another one just to compare. But for now it's okay. And then we can say save it. And after saving, after the processing of the Snapseed, we can go back into our raw converter and by right clicking on the folder we can use refresh of the folder so that we get this black and white TIFF file back into the raw converter Aftershot Pro and here you can either use some other settings of the converter or you can leave it as it is. I will leave it as it is, I'm happy with it. And I can right, go right into the output and print this image to a good old paper. Yeah, this was it. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Goodbye.